BBC News at nine o'clock. The Conservatives are focusing on their tax and transport manifesto pledges after the row about Rishi Sunak's early departure from the D-Day commemorations in Normandy on Thursday. They'll say that if elected, they'd permanently scrap stamp duty for first-time buyers on homes up to £425,000 in England and Northern Ireland. They're also promising to block blanket 20 mile an hour speed limits in towns and to get rid of the ultra-low emission zone in London. Many taxes rose during the last parliament, but the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper, said the conditions were now right to bring them down. It's taken time before we've been able to start reducing taxes on working people, but because we've got the public finances in uh, better shape, we've been able to make two cuts to national insurance on working families already this year, uh, and we hope to be able to do more in the future as we're able to afford it. And I think that's a very clear choice with what people would face with the Labour government. Mr Harper said it had been right for Mr Sunak to apologise for leaving the D-Day events early, but he said the Prime Minister's record showed that he cared about veterans. The Labour Party is to set out how it intends to help entrepreneurs and small businesses if it wins the general election. Its programme would include the scrapping of business rates, moves to eradicate late payments to small firms and measures to help them land public contracts. The Liberal Democrats also said they would look at overhauling the business rate system. An estimated 20,000 motorcyclists have hit the road at the start of a 300-mile journey to celebrate the life of the TV chef and hairy biker Dave Myers, who died in February. The 66-year-old had been suffering from cancer. The procession is heading from the Ace Cafe in North London to Dave's hometown of Barrow in Cumbria. BBC News. Yes, darlings, the news is good. The gardener turned up and he's exactly, exactly what I was hoping for and what we need. So he was just coming, as I think I mentioned, for an assessment, really. <clears throat> but he kind of just cracked on a little bit when, when he was here. So uh, <clears throat> he really has only begun to scratch the surface but it's already made a it's already made a difference now he'll be back next week with his team but yeah he know he understands exactly he seems like a, a splendid chap um, and he's certainly not not work shy not by any manner I mean so there's been a bit of weeding steps are a bit clearer and the first thing he tackled this is looking so much better, isn't it? So the first thing you really tackled was what used to be my lawn. So, <clears throat> I mean, this was almost up to your waist. So he's had to strim it and then he's just done a very high cut. Um, so it's going to take a while to get this back, but he said it's... Um, he said we caught it just in time. It's totally savable. Um, so yeah, and he'll gradually bring it down to the correct length. He had a quick bit of a weed up here. I mean, this is literally just like an hour or an an hour and a half's work that wasn't really planned. He was just coming up to have a look and to feed back to the, um, to the agency, let them know what he thought was going to be needed. But it's a difference, isn't it? It's definitely a difference. So, yeah, I'm feeling um, very optimistic and hopeful that, uh, you yeah, know, that he's just the chap we need and that the the garden will be brought back to its former glory and that they're the right people to be looking after it. He's ever such a nice guy. Um, so, yeah, that's better news for today. Right.
लंच Nicely bleached, willy waving cloths. Wonderful. And as I said I would, or I would try to keep going, I've done my washing up from this morning and lunchtime so that uh, tonight when I come home from work, I can come home to a nice, clean, tidy kitchen, which will be nice. I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. What a rather lovely afternoon. Not as warm as it could be. And I had a look at the weather forecast a few moments ago. Well, about half an hour ago. And it's going to piss it down for the next week. Oh, deep joy. Lurch forward, why don't you? Hello, Windsor Davis. Hello, Miss Boo. Hello, Stigma Pond Thundercock. Hello, Sir Richard and Lady Morris. That time I had to play with some of them. Too busy driving this one. I'm in Christine, of course. The press release Rover 45. God, it is lovely. What a day for a daydream. What a day for a daydreaming boy. And I've been lost in a daydream. Dreaming about my bundle of joy. More on that story later.
my front door going to the car. Somebody was driving by in a Rover 75 CDTI Tourer and it was a very nice looking car so I smiled at them and they smiled back at me, well the driver did it anyway. And I wonder, was it just coincidence that a Rover Tourer drove past my front door or was it somebody who watches the channel and was in the area and decided to take a drive past, drive up my lane, have a look at the cars? I really, really hope it was. It's so that does happen. Um, people who watch the channel, you know, it's not difficult to work out where I live. I don't make a secret of it. And um, I know that if they're in the area, I know because they tell me if they're in the area, they'll they'll make a detour and have a slow drive past, have a look at the cars. And I think that's really cool. I don't feel stalked or vulnerable or anything like that. I think, I think it's brilliant. I love it.
it's basically, um, oh, I don't know what you call it, like a, a beacon, a beacon, but it's it's like a lighthouse. It, oh, look at that to the left. It's like a like a lighthouse thing, like an inland lighthouse, but I believe it's a, it's a beacon, quite a or a clock tower, like a lighthouse or a clock tower, something like that. And apparently it's a beacon. It's on top of the hill uh, on the right hand side, and that would have been lit. Well, when beacons were lit historically for reasons. Can you see it now? Oh, you might have just got a glimpse of it. Anyway, apparently it was lit for the D-Day things. See if you can see it now. Right, it's at about 10 o'clock on top of that bluff there. If you freeze framed it or took a screenshot and zoomed in, I think you would have seen it then. I love the idea of beacons. Oh, it's at, it's at three o'clock now, so you won't see it again. But it's, um, oh, I tell you what, if I can be asked, <clears throat> if I can be asked, then in the morning when I come to edit this, I'll, um, I'll whiz a picture of it up or a link to the description of what it is and what it's for or what it used to be for. For my own interest as well as yours. And speaking of Rover 75s, look, there's a saloon here on the right. 53 plate pre facelift. Nice gold colour. Okay, darlings, time to go and see 
wet, wet. Okay, that was actually rather a fun night. Certainly a busy one. But now, time to go home. Glasgow School of Arts, which, like the tea rooms we're in, was designed by Scottish architect Charles Rennie Mackintosh. It was... Oh, before I forget, before I forget, hang on, let me just manoeuvre out of here. <clears throat> now, as some of you know, then throughout my life, I've been a voracious reader. When times allowed, I would read two or three books a day. And I'm a reasonably, well, I was a reasonably discerning reader. And of course, I was brought up in a house of books. There were books in every room in my parents' house, floor to ceiling in many of them. And of course, all of the classics were there. So there are very few classics, if you like, you know, pivotal, important books that are, well, I wouldn't have thought there were any that I ha hadn't read. And yet, and yet, um, on Radio 4 this evening, which I've been diving in and out of because I've had to do uh, some deliveries again tonight, um, and so yeah, uh, there's um, first and first and uh, first of all, there was a discussion about um, France and Kafka. Hang on, what am I talking about? <laughs> France and Kafka. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's late. My brain is all scrambled. Hang on, let me let me light a fag and figure out what the bloody hell I'm trying to blab out of it. Oh dear. That's better. Sorry, there was a Radio 4 programme about Orwell and Kafka. And, you know, the phrase is Orwellian and Kafkaesque and so on and so on and so on. And I got bits and pieces of that when I was in the car. Uh, and then in the following hour, between 9 and 10, there was um, an episode, uh, an abridged version of George Orwell's 1984. And I was listening to the bits of that and it occurred to me that I must never have read 1984. And I find that amazing. So tell me in the comments, have you read 1984? I'm pretty sure, now you know me, you know I'm not into films, but I'm pretty sure it was a film, wasn't it? And the only reason I know that is because I'm sure Richard Burton uh, was in it got a feeling he only I've got a feeling he only played a what was he big brother was he the voice of big brother I don't know I've never seen I've never seen the film but I'm just amazed that I've never read that book and um, no I probably need to read it don't I but there we are it was uh, I need to catch up on the um, well I, I need to catch up on the discussion programs apparently there have been three or there are three in total um, and also I need to listen to all of the episodes of 1984 and fill in the gaps in in my lamentable <clears throat> omission in this not having been a, a part of my life they were drawing some very interesting parallels in the discussion between the uh, I forget what it's called, the, um, uh, the, the place in 1984. Um, they, it wasn't actually mentioned in the bits of the uh, reading that I, I heard. Was it Oceania? 
was it Oceania they said in the discussion? Anyway, they were drawing really interesting parallels between that and Putin's Russia, which were fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And the Soviet Union historically. Really, really interesting. I, I need to listen back to the whole thing, maybe tonight after the live stream. If not, some point tomorrow or over the next few days anyway. And if you've got any interest in that sort of thing at all, you might want to do the same. Right, I'm heading back to Radio 4 for a bit. Catch you when we're nearer home. It's lighter tonight than it was at this time last night. Ah, there we are. Well, hang on, you can stay with me as we go around the island. I suppose that's something. Oh, fucking hell, the potholes here. I wish they'd do those. It's a, it's a nightmare. Now, tonight, I'm not in the mood to go batshit crazy through the lanes, as I have the last few nights. Uh, tonight, I'm just in the mood to waft home along the main road. And that's a bit boring, so I won't make you watch it. Right, there we are. Over the A38 Island. Oh, bloody red traffic lights. Coming into Alfreton. And I will catch you when we're nearer to home. Being rescued from Gaza. The one woman and three men have been snatched by Hamas from the Nova Music Festival on the 7th of October. The hostages were freed from two separate buildings in Nuzerat by what the Israeli military said was a high-risk and complex mission in central Gaza during the day. The Palestinian Authority said scores of Palestinians have been killed in the Israeli operation. Two hospitals in Gaza said they counted 70 bodies between them, while Hamas claims at least 210 people have been killed and 400 injured. Nir Barkat is the Israeli Minister of Economy and says Israel has no interest in killing civilians. We're telling the, the residents of Gaza, shy away, shy away from our hostages, shy away, move away from the terrorists because we are going to get our hostages back, we're going to kill the terrorists, and if the Hamas is trying to use human, uh, the, the, the residents of Gaza as human shield, then the human shield must shy away. We have no interest in killing civilians. The search for the missing author and broadcaster Michael Mosley on the Greek island of Simi has finished for another day. He was last seen on Wednesday in a statement his wife said the family wouldn't lose hope. President Biden says France remains America's best friend after a wide-ranging discussion with President Macron at the Elysee Palace in Paris. France is holding a state visit for the US president following the commemoration of the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Thousands of motorcyclists have finished an epic ride from London to Cumbria to celebrate the life of the hairy biker Dave Myers. The TV chef died in February at the age of 66 after he was diagnosed with cancer. Queen Camilla has said the King is doing fine but won't slow down and won't do what he's told. She gave the update to the Jack Reacher author Lee Child of the Queen's Reading Room Festival at Hampton Court Palace. The King has recently returned to public duties while still receiving treatment for cancer. BBC News. <clears throat> All well versus Kafka on Radio 4 and BBC Sounds. Now, as part of our Orwell versus Kafka season, Tom Hollander concludes our day of readings from George Orwell's great dystopian masterpiece, <coughs> 1984. Now, in the terrifyingly windowless Ministry of Love, Winston Smith finally finds out what's in room 101. <laughs> They still held him to the bed, 
but he could move his knees a little and could turn his head from side to side and raise his arms from the elbow. The dial also had grown to be less of a terror. He could evade its pangs if he was quick-witted enough. It was chiefly when he showed stupidity that O'Brien pulled the lever. Sometimes they got through a whole session without use of the dial. He could not remember how many sessions there had been. The whole process seemed to stretch out over a long, indefinite time. Weeks, possibly. As you lie there, said O'Brien, you have often wondered, you have even asked me, why the Ministry of Love should expend so much time and trouble on you. You could grasp the mechanics of the society you lived in, but not its underlying motives. Do you remember writing in your diary, I understand how, I do not understand why. It was when you thought about why that you doubted your own sanity. You have read the book, Gold Steve's book, or parts of it at least. Did they tell you anything you did not know already? You have read it, said Winston. I wrote it. That is to say, I collaborated in writing it. No book is produced individually, as you know. Is it true what it says? As description, yes. The program it sets forth is nonsense. The secret accumulation of knowledge, a gradual spread of enlightenment, ultimately a proletarian rebellion, the overthrow of the party. You foresaw yourself that that was what it would say. It is all nonsense. The proletarians will never revolt, not in a thousand years or a million. If you have ever cherished any dreams of violent insurrection, you must abandon them. There is no way in which the party can be overthrown. The rule of the party is forever. Make that the starting point of your thoughts. He came closer to the bed. Forever, he repeated. And now let us get back to the question of how and why. You understand well enough how the party maintains itself in power. Now tell me why we cling to power. What is our motive? Why should we want power? Go on, speak. Nevertheless, Winston did not speak for another moment or two. A feeling of weariness had overwhelmed him. The faint, mad gleam of enthusiasm had come back into O'Brien's face. He knew in advance what O'Brien would say. That the party did not seek power for its own ends, but only for the good of the majority. That it sought power because men in the mass were frail, cowardly creatures who could not endure liberty or face the truth and must be ruled over and systematically deceived by others who were stronger than themselves. That the choice for mankind lay between freedom and happiness, and that for the bulk of mankind, happiness was better. That the party was the eternal guardian of the weak, and that's it, darlings. I'm going to have to catch up with the rest of that last episode. Later on, or tomorrow, or at some point. I can't believe I've never read that, but I definitely haven't. Okay, my lovelies. So, that's about it. Thank you again for your company. As always, it really wouldn't be the same without you. Much love from me, and I'll see you next time. For you, and a very Orwellian, Bosch. <laughs>